Hello, welcome pen friends. Welcome to number four episode of Viewer's Choice 2 series. Today we're talk, going to talk about Monteverde Napa Burgundy. This is quite an ink. Oh, I can't wait to show you. <laughs> it's really, really pretty and it turns out it does some really interesting things too. So, let's see what it does in water. Um, I've got a prediction. I'm thinking that maybe we'll still be able to read it. That's as far as I'm willing to go on that. But uh, I don't think it's going to disappear totally, but we'll see. That's just based on what it's done on the panels. I'm starting to kind of notice things like that. So we'll let that happen. And then the last ink we did was Monteverde Yosemite Green. And it did behave just like, you know, typical fountain pen um, ink. It uh, It's... Uh, gone so you don't want to address an envelope with this one so unless you wax over it or tape over it or something like that so while that's happening let's get into the rhodia gold book where i start everything this is my very beginning starting point actually over here on this side so today marks our halfway point on this series and uh, so we got four more but here it is kind of dulled itself down a little bit on this paper but we're going to look at it on a variety of papers, so we'll get to see. Actually, it did even more of a act on <laughs> on the uh, Tamoy River paper, the 52 gram. But it retained its color nicely here and here. This is the broad nib, the Yowo broad nib, and then this is the medium Goulet nib. So um, it kind of looks darker to me in the medium nib, which is interesting. But I love how it looks in the broad nib. So um, I didn't go too far on examining where to get the ink. I just did find it right away at Goulet Pens for $1.25 for a 2 mil sample. Um, and $15 for the 90 mil sample. I am just so blessed because a pen friend sent me like a 4 mil sample. So I'm all set to really test it out and use it and know what I think of it. So there it is there. Now we've got two more notebooks. Um, let's first do the um, Tamoy River paper in the Cafe Note by Nanami Paper Company. Okay, and I've got it in both the broad nib and the medium. So here it is on this side in the broad nib and then the medium over here. So I mean I liked it. It's um, I think I like it on some of the other papers better and I'll show you when we get to the paper samples. Because it, it got a little bit uh, more muted on here. But for those who like that, that's it's something to really uh, notice. Is that it does get a little bit um, muted on Tamoy River paper. But it's nice. So I've been out. I've had a busy morning. And I did take care of my emergency and got two pair of jeans. Because I was at the point where I've lost 28 pounds and nothing was fitting. I mean, and it's just when you have a little a weight loss you don't want to walk around in baggy pants you then you still feel bad you don't feel good you know you don't feel like you're <laughs> looking your best so I there um, we have a lot of uh, thrift stop shops here and, and I got a got a really good deal so okay this is the other little notebook um, the Nemesign and I'm continuing with um, the Boho Berry Challenge for December is a uh, year in review it's it's helping us kind of look over our year and um, I decided to just shift gears and go from the gratitude which ended with uh, ink journal into this uh, little notebook for it because I like how the ink looks in here and it's given me a chance to test further the moon man mini glass nib too but I really like how that came out and we were doing let's see the prompt on the second which is yesterday was you know to sum up your year in three words and um uh, I picked grief, success, and creativity. So there was kind of an up, up and down there, balance. And then my favorite memory was when my cat, Willie, first appeared. Um, he is here. <laughs> well, this isn't the best picture of him, but this is Willie. And most of you that have followed me a while know that he came out of nowhere two days after um, Tony died, our cat that was 13 years old. And he just, like... Uh, really saved me because I was already hurting knowing that my other cat Mina was already in kidney failure and um, So that you know, it's interesting that my most traumatic thing which accounts for the word grief was losing You know our three cats 
um, starting in February and then the last one was in September. But during that grief came the, my favorite memory of the year so far was uh, him running toward me like that, even though I was crying and I would think a cat that didn't know me would just be really freaked out by that. But it was, it made me believe in spirit again. You know, it really did. So, okay, so that's the notebooks, but let's get on to the paper here. Um, so, Tamoy River paper, here it is. Uh, let's see, I ignore the little green smear there from the other day, but it did look good on here, I thought, especially in the broad nib, but the uh, medium nib held its own too. In fact, it looks darker, so you, you'd have a choice of how you want it to appear, really. This kind of lightens and brightens it in the broad nib. <clears throat> so there was that. And then in the Loistrum dot grid paper, I made a mistake because it was like monkey see here. I started copying it wrong, but it looks really nice there too, but you still see that distinction, how the medium nib makes it appear a little darker. Um, which I think is a good thing. It's the variety that we can get. You know, it just totally changes the ink, really. So, okay. And here we're getting into the papers where I thought this ink looked exceptional on, and which is not normally my thing, but the Rhodia Dot Grid, the ADG, um, looks really good in here. And you still see the difference. It's darker appearing in the medium nib. And then in the uh, broad nib, it, it is lighter and brighter, but it, it really looks special on there. It seems like I see a little more shading. So I like that. <clears throat> and on Claire Fontaine 90 gram French ruled paper, um, I don't like the paper, but I like, I mean, the, I don't like the distracting lines, but that's a very personal, ridiculous thing and just about me. But I saw a lot more shading and I liked how it behaved. And I'm sure this would be how it would act on the rest of my, um, plain white Claire Fontaine paper too. I don't have much left, but I have one notebook I'm filling up and uh, a little bit of the Triumph um, stationery is left too. So again, it, it had a lot of shading and it looked good to me and it darkened a lot in the medium nib. But this uh, ink was so flowy and so good that it, it didn't uh, feel dry or anything on the Claire Fontaine. And then over on Office Depot College Ruled, um, it, it comes across a bit darker maybe in the broad nib. Um, let's see if we can actually see that. I don't know. Probably not. It's awfully hard to show really with my setup with what I have here. But uh, anyway, I liked it and let's see if it bled through. I know it didn't anything else. Okay, where I X'd and went nuts, it did try to bleed through a little, but that was a heavy marking out and xing and you know that that's unusual that was because again i started to copy the one above probably because of this you know busyness uh, thing that i got myself into so um let's look at some panels and let's peek in on this okay well it, it didn't retain like i thought it would but you can read it so um i thought because of how it acted on here that maybe it would be even more of a drastic retention of the color and letters, but it, you could see that just the pigment, not the actual color. I mean, the like dark gray or or um, black in there. Okay, whoops. Let's let's get a panel out, and I have to say um, that it's a little different today because I found that I had two panels and a whole bunch of things to compare this ink to, but I didn't have the time to make a separate panel. So here's today's ink and we can get it right up and close to all of the ones we want to compare it to. Uh, starting, I think, with Diamine Burgundy Royale. Um, that is interesting how much alike that looks, but it does behave a little bit differently. It looks like it's a little more water. Um, the Diamine um, ran a little more when the water was introduced. Okay, and then down here, let's see, work around this tripod. Here is Diatremenus Blackberry to the left, and here's our color of the day, Monteverdi Napa Burgundy. That's quite a ways away, you know, and yet I can see the similarities. Oh, uh, well, this was Robert Oster Lipstick Red, and the base color reminds me of it, but that's about where that ends. And here's one you may be familiar with, Diamine Syrah. Um, the color really is close, but then your base, this is much more of a pink, 
um, and bright bright versus uh, a little bit more muted here so that's just the inner innards of the ink I guess here's Kobe number six Bordeaux which comes across much brighter in writing in fact I meant to show that to you let's see I, I may have even bookmarked it no I didn't oh shoot anyway this ink really bright is brighter on the page so if you're looking for the the same family but you want it to come across a little brighter I would then recommend Kobe number no. six Bordeaux that's a gorgeous ink there's the Kurt, uh, Krishna black rose and Mont Blanc burgundy red so you could compare them hmm we got quite a few okay it's a long way from Noodler's uh, black swan and Australian roses okay let's see did we even look at uh, Diatrementus Cherry? That That's a very similar ink in the way it behaves because that's a lot more, not maybe bulletproof, but it doesn't move around as, mu it, as much as some of the others. So let me get out one more panel because we have quite a few more. Um, and some of these are, are duplicates of what we just looked at and some are not. So um, here is Diamine Oxblood and... It interests me how much similar they look in color at times and yet the ins you know the the composition is so different you see that that's much more of a deep red kind of a blood red um, let's see we did the Mont Blanc Bur burgundy red we did that uh, here's one this much more reddish the Diatrementis Dante Alajahari I'm not really sure how you say that um, and here, up here is one that really looks similar. J. Arbonne Rue Grenat. Rouge, Rouge Grenat. <laughs> I would have tried to retain that memory. Um, and it's darker in its when it's mixed with water. But it does look quite a bit alike there. Diatrementis Cherry again. So there's a little bit of duplication. But let's get my, my final one that I just wanted to show as a, like a co comparison. These are my three favorite reds. Um, probably my most favorite is KWZ Thief's Red, but I like this for being a, a beautiful bright red that is um, still not quite burgundy, but it, it's deep and it's different, so it has a lot of interest. And I just wanted to show you how they compared. So there, there's quite a bit of difference, but that'll just give you a, a, a view of it. And then there's the Diamine to the left classic red where my thumb is. Oops, and then um, KWZ Thief's Red, which is just bright, bright um, here to the left. I just thought that would help um, help you look at it. And, you know, um, it would have been fine to make another panel, but I, I had so many other things that are happening that I just decided to leave it at that for today. But I want to show you what happened when I did the Nick Stewart um, little technique and I'm not even have I don't even have everything I'm supposed to have but it's getting really fun it really is and this ink it surprised me it had a lot more going on inside it and you'll see in the other one too you know coming out the lighter pink and some a lot of gray came out a dark gray kind of a tint to it and um this was just so different the way it came out that I ended up uh, trying to just make some funny looking trees maybe you know and I tried to just go real easy because if you go light with your pen um, it the picture stays it retains more of its natural beauty so that was really a lot of fun <laughs> a lot of fun and let me show you the first I did one to start with um, that came out a lot different we'll just put them side by side so the one on the right I used an ink syringe but then I thought to myself, I don't like that. That's way too much. And so I looked back on my instructions that I did get from that Pen World magazine. And, you know, I tend to just do things real quickly and get things, ideas in my head. But he does show putting on that, uh, that ink initially with a paintbrush. And, of course, he uses a pen, too, of some kind. Not Probably not the pen I have. Um... So I thought, well, if I slow down and just try it and try it again, you know, and see what happens. So this was the first one with the ink syringe here and here. And it just sort of, it's still got some beauty, some real, like, it looks almost like a fire. 
Uh, but then I was so happy with this because it gave a chance to create a little something extra there. It wasn't so dark. And then this is the visual journal. And I really, really had fun with this one. Let me hold it up so you can see. See what I mean about the gray? Like, um, it may be a little too low for the composition of the picture. It would have been nice if it was up higher. But I've seen the sky looking kind of like that in Vermont um, in the evening. You know, at night, right before it's about to get dark. So this was really, really fun. And I just, I thought about coming in and doing more in here. But I liked how it looked so much that I just did just a tiny bit of little dots on the sides, you know, left it alone because I liked it. Um, you see gray and, and the darker kind of edging around. You see that here too. And then lots of pink and light gray and maroon coming out. So we just have to ignore our little <laughs> green bomb that came from the Yosemite green. So um, this remains one of my favorite things to study the ink with is this technique. And so I think today I'll... Once again, I will go ahead and um, link this for you in case you're just watching this one. Maybe you haven't seen the others um, because this uh, article in Penworld Magazine, this is one of the pages. And I was able to just print this out, have it at my art desk, and it's made all the difference. It's really been fun. So, Okay, so I think that's it for today. So let's look at what's next. Because we're, we're tipping over the halfway point and we're going to go to this beautiful Robert Oster Soda Pop Blue. Which I've been seeing more and more of here and there. It's got shading. It's got red sheen on the edges. Uh, I have used this in a, uh, a Gen Hao pen. And I can't think what the... It, it's one of those more obscure little ones with a hooded nib. It's not a shark pen. It's the other kind. The plain kind. And I right now I'm having a brain malfunction but I've written a lot with the ink and I like it um, I was given a very generous sample long time ago uh, over a year ago by a um, more experienced pen friend and so I have really enjoyed that ink so I'll have a lot of fun showing it to you so um, that is all for now but I will be back with this beautiful blue ink. And, um, oh, I, just one more thing I wanted to mention. I really apologize. I'm behind on comments on the channel. And I'm, I'm even behind on, uh, suddenly, uh, it feels like I'm behind on pen pal writing too. But I'm going to have time at my desk later. And, um, you know, it, it's like that. It goes real slow. And then lots of mail comes in and, and so then you start realizing, whoops, <laughs> you know, when I start seeing the dates on some of the envelopes, um, I, I realize. But it's all good, I think. And, and just know that I I love receiving all the letters and, and I will uh, be responding. I sometimes need to be in just the right frame of mind to, to write a letter. But because then it goes well and I enjoy it and I think it comes through better. So um, but while this is uploading, I will be uh, or while this one is uploading. I'll be trying to answer comments, and I enjoy that so much. I had a family day yesterday, and the urgent need for jeans <laughs> today, because I just, you know, I can't see where I'm trying to keep them up with the belt. It's getting ridiculous. So, all right, I got to go because I'm off topic. But <laughs> see you next time, and thank you all for being here. Bye for now.